if you're measuring, uh, if your calibration were say half a newton and your full scale were uh, 10 or 20 newtons, uh, you'd be less accurate than you could be. Likewise, if you use the calibration of 100 newtons trying to measure something and you're expecting the, the peak to be between 10 and 20 newtons, you'd be introducing some inaccuracy uh, there as well. So let's go ahead and let's uh, turn our attention to uh, the specific uh, dual range force sensor and how we're going to measure force. Okay, so now I have the uh, dual range force sensor uh, attached and I've, I've set it up here so it's in clear view. I have a, a weight hanging from it, but the logger light doesn't see it yet. So let's try the same thing we tried before and let's go ahead and close it. And then if we, uh, if we get back into it, Uh, it will tend to uh, automatically recognize that we switched out which sensor was connected to the LabQuest. So now it knows that we're measuring force, but it probably kind of went back to some default settings. So let's talk about how to get back to uh, what we're really interested in here. If we just hit collect, it says that the force is 1.306 newtons. And let's think about whether or not that's right, because what we have hanging there is not a weight that's uh, going to generate a force of 1.06 newtons. What we have hanging there is actually the calibration weight uh, that's used for laboratory scales and it's very carefully manufactured and tested to weigh or to have a mass of exactly 100 grams. So the mass here is 100 grams. So uh, to com compute weight in uh, MKS units or in, in Newtons, uh, one, I'm sorry, 100 grams is 0 0.100 kilograms. And then uh, in a physics class, you could learn that the force is equal to the weight uh, of that. So the weight would then be equal to 0 0.100 kilograms times the acceleration of gravity and the acceleration of gravity the acceleration of gravity is 9.8 meters per second squared so that the weight which is the downward force that the hanging mass applies when it's still is going to be 0 0.98 Newtons. Because it's a very carefully factory uh, designed uh, item and it is designed at the factory to have a mass of uh, very nearly exactly 100 grams and there might be uh, some milligram uh, error in that but it's pretty accurate so that the weight we know and the force when it hangs is going to be very very close to 0.98 Newtons and here we have this issue here that is hanging there and it seems to be that the sensor is detecting um, a force close to 1.3 newtons and the reason for that could be attributable to various factors but it can be fixed through recalibrating it and a lot of it probably has to do uh, with the fact that there's a hook here if we unscrewed the hook uh, uh, the weight hanging here would be a little lighter, less the mass of the hook and so on. Uh, but we can fix this if you note that there's a zero button right here. And what, the, what pressing the zero button does is it recreates a zero in the weight. So let's just uh, get the uh, hanging weight so that, oops, <laughs> get the hanging weight so it's no longer exerting a force. Hit the zero button. So essentially, it's, it's like if you were, uh, you were going to weigh some produce, but you were weighing the produce in a tray, you'd want to subtract the weight of the tray that the produce was in, so you're really only measuring the weight of the produce. So what, what we just did electronically by uh, hitting that zero button is like subtracting the weight of the tray, so you're measuring uh, relative to the, the added weight, which in this case is simply the suspended mass. So when we do that, the force becomes 
uh, 0.99 newtons, which is very close to what we were expecting as the 0.98 newtons, but that's still about a 1 or 1.2 percent error, and we're really trying to get our uh, our accuracy to better than 1 percent. So how do we then uh, make additional adjustments uh, so that we're accurate? Okay, so let's go ahead and if we go to experiment menu, I'm going to go ahead and uh, zoom in a lot more for this. Alright, so if we go to the experiment menu and then we come down here to calibrate, um, calibrate the dual range for sensor, it's the only one that's connected. So reading one, so what we want to do is uh, go ahead and calibrate it now and we want to essentially create zero force. So to create zero force we pick up the hanging mass and we set it on something so it's not pulling down. So now we have zero force so we can enter uh, zero newtons. And now reading two we can go ahead and apply the known force or the known weight and the known weight is exactly very accurately 0.98 newtons and we keep that and then we hit done and now that it's been calibrated our reading here is much closer to uh, 0.98 newtons and if we ran it through the whole collection uh, for the 10 seconds we'll go ahead and let it do that We could zoom in, and the way to zoom in here is that I think if you click on the axis, you get axis options. And rather than going from negative 10 to 10, let's make the top of the scale. Oh, let's make it 2 or so, and let's make the bottom of the scale 0. So we're just zooming in vertically. Oh, somehow I ended up in Never Never Land. Zooming in vertically. So we can see that there's some noise, and most electronic instruments have noise of some kind or another. Um, but let's go ahead and do, let's average out that noise in the following way. For example, if you click on the stats here, you can compute the statistics. And so you, we can see that there's a min and that there's a max, but there's also a mean. And the mean is uh, 0.9818. So if our expectation was exactly 0.98, then our error is about 18 parts in a thousand. And uh, 18 parts in a thousand uh, isn't too bad. It's about two tenths of 1%. So after calibration, our accuracy is about two tenths of a percent, which is consistent with what, uh, what we were hoping for. All right, now let's also go to this experiment tab and let's talk about the data collection here because just like uh, with the temperature, just like with the rocket motors, many times you want to be able to control the sample rate and the, and the duration of the sampling. So why don't we go ahead and let's sample for 10 seconds still. But why don't we raise our sample rate to 1,000 samples per second and so it's going to sample at 1,000 samples per second for 10 seconds, and that's going to be 10,000 samples total, which is, you know, hard if you were doing all that with pencil and paper, but computers are real great at this. And then let's hit collect. And we'll see that uh, it does real well. It just runs along there. The, the, the mass is hanging. Um, and then when it gets to the end, it computes. And now the... Uh, uh, computes the statistics as well and we can see that our errors jumped up to about 0.4% uh, in this case uh, but it's still less than 1% so we won't worry about it and one of the things that we'll do and that we'll learn especially when conducting a, an experiment that uh, where more accuracy is required you want to test early and test often for your zero and zero means you just don't put any force on it at all. You want it to be zero. And then we can run through, say, is our zero still good? And if you run through uh, 10 seconds at 1,000 samples per second, uh, the average of all those measurements should be very close to zero. So the average is actually 0 0.0037. 
And if you notice, our mean was a little bit high when we had the hanging weight by about 0 0.004. So if we re-zero it, uh, odds are pretty good that if we run it again, we'll have accuracy closer to what we're hoping for. Alright, so after the re-zeroing, uh, the mean is point, uh, 0.9822, so now we're back close to uh, two-tenths of a percent uh, in our error uh, in the measurement. And I say, okay, well, this is just static measurements. Why do you have to measure a thousand samples per second just to get a static measurement? Well, we can do more than that with the force sensor because of its sensitivity. For example, and, and the sample rate, if we start the pendulum swinging back and forth, uh, we can now see that the force sensor is measuring a dynamic force measurement because as it swings, uh, the force changes uh, as the, the mass swings back and forth on the pendulum. So this is one of the great advantages of the dual range force sensors. It doesn't just measure static forces like a bathroom scale but it can measure dynamic forces that are changing at a rate and that it can sample them at a thousand samples per second. Okay, so now let's see what it's like. Let's go ahead and uh, save this as, and let's go ahead and navigate back to our, uh, back to our Vernier directory. And let's save this one as pendulum force test. And the reason I like to save uh, files both in the native file format of the logger light, the GMBL format, as well as in a text file is, well, first of all, it gives you some redundancy. And second of all, if I want to open it back up in logger light, uh, having the GMBL file is the best way to do it. And then if I want to open it in a spreadsheet or in some other uh, data analysis graphing program, uh, then I could do it if it's saved as a text file. So pendulum force test. All right, so now we've gone over uh, calibration. We've gone over the dual range force sensor. Uh, we've gone over uh, zeroing and so on. Let's uh, look at calibration uh, one more time because this is something that's uh, that's really uh, important in terms of the operation of the force plate. So let's just visit it again. Calibrate menu under experiment, experiment, calibrate, calibrate the first force sensor. Uh, calibrate now, units or newtons. And before we enter zero here, we want to make sure that the force that we're applying is really what we intend to be the zero in force. So we essentially uh, have the weight supported by something else and not by the uh, force gauge. Then we can put in zero. Then we hang the mass once again. So now we're applying a downward force of very nearly uh, 0 0.98 newtons and then enter that as the known good force uh, press keep press done and now we're recalibrated uh, if we wanted to oh see now what I did was I hit zero with the nine with the 0.98 newtons hanging there so now I've reset my zero with the weight applied so even though we know that there's 0.98 newtons hanging there, is measuring zero because we've redefined that to be zero. And then if we pick it up, then that's negative uh, 0.98. So that's not what we really wanted to do. So you need to take some care. When you re-zero it by hitting that zero button there, you need to make sure that the configuration you intend is really what you intend to be defining zero force and then you add the additional force 
and then so that the additional force is the positive force uh, that you're expecting and then you can measure it uh, in the usual way. Uh, let me also mention as long as we're talking about these things that with regard to more complicated measurements uh, there are some automated uh, triggering mechanisms built in. Uh, my experience with laboratory equipment is that if you can just sort of use a manual triggering and uh, uh, work around the data analysis from there, things usually work better. Uh, for example, uh, if testing something, uh, you could hit uh, just start and then you apply the force that you want to apply and then you uh, zoom in on the area of interest uh, for whatever analysis you want to do. Uh, let me go ahead and show a couple other things as long as we're here. Let's uh, zoom in because this thing is real sensitive to uh, noises and uh, I want uh, due care needs to be exercised not to introduce uh, a noise and error just through careless experimental techniques. Uh, for example, here I am, I'm tapping on the support for the monitor over here and it's affecting the force sensor over there. If you want the force sensor to be doing its most accurate uh, that it can do, you really want some mechanical isolation and, and really you don't want any other vibrations or shaking. Somebody comes along and, let me go ahead and run that again, somebody comes along and bumps the experimental apparatus, or this was just the computer, right? Tapping on the computer uh, introduces noise into the measurement, so you need to be careful about things like that.